check out what's going on at HFCC today. Sounds like a Raisin Cane's drive through greeting, I know, but it rhymed. Where was I? Oh, announcements. Here we go. Wednesday nights at Heritage of Faith are few for the week or week. It's a play on words. Get it? See, if you're feeling weak during the week, Wednesday night service is perfect faith fuel. No matter if your faith seems weak or strong, you'll leave even stronger than you came. Ready to overcome. See you Wednesday. What's up, everybody? G29 stands for Generation 29, as in the 29th chapter of the Book of Acts. Wait, there's only 28. Nope, our generation, this generation, is writing the 29th chapter every single day. Awesome, right? And besides all this, our youth group is flat out amazing. There's just no other way to put it. So, if you're in grades 6 through 12 and want to hang with the in crowd, join us Sunday and Wednesday nights as we dive in God's Word and get in God's presence. Hasta la vista! It's game night. It's cold outside, but the competition is heating up. We're playing cards, board games, and just hanging out. If you're between the ages of 18 and 30-something, this is the place to be. Stay tuned to social media for more details. Acquaintance plus fellowship equals relationship. We can get acquainted at a church service, but fellowship is the follow-up that leads to friendships. Friends we can run alongside as we chase Jesus. Thrive groups meet every third Sunday of the month from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Find your Thrive groups after the service in the lobby. Talk to a Thrive group leader today. If you're new with us today, we want you to feel right at home here at Heritage. This is a safe place for you and your family. We're so glad that you chose to be with us and we would love to stay connected with you. See this card? You can find one in the seat back in front of you. Simply fill it out, tear off the bottom, and turn it into our first time visitors lounge. You'll receive a special welcome gift as you go. This morning. Welcome to Heritage of Faith this morning. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. We're excited about you being here this morning. You're ready for a glorious day of flourishing and abounding. How many of y'all ready for that? Amen? You excited about that this morning? Well, we're excited about you being here. Uh, take a few uh, seconds here to just uh, visit with someone. Give them a hug. Tell them it's glad to see them. Give them a high five if you, if, uh, you don't know them. And uh, bless them as, it, as we start. Yeah. 
Here. Yeah.
children of Israel and David when facing Goliath is that the children of Israel measured Goliath according to their own stature. But David measured Goliath according to God's stature. Our thoughts have to get bigger with God. So just right now, just set your affections on him and let faith arise in you. I let faith arise in me in this moment.
your glory, not from us, but for us. Now, Lord, there's so many facets to your glory. We ask you to continuously unveil your glory to us. We take the limits off. We take the boundaries off. We lean not on our own understanding. When we ask you, during these days of your glory on the earth, reveal to us continuously all that your glory is to us. We take the limits off. Say this with me. I take the limits off. I take the limits off. Say, Lord, Lord, I don't want any limits in my life. I don't want any limits in my life. Show me, Show me. your glory. Now, Lord, we are that glorious church. And I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in us, through us, by your glory, 
Christ Jesus. Unveil to us this morning more of who you are and your desire to see lives changed, bodies healed, and the devil stopped. To see a glorious church without spot or blemish. We look unto you, Jesus. Unveil to us the truths that we need for our personal lives. We come individually and collectively. There are people here, Lord, that need a special touch from you. A revelation specifically for their needs. For what's going on in their lives. You are the author and you are the finisher, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to manifest your glory in this place and in the hearts and minds of everyone in the sound of my voice. For those who are watching by way of internet, as Pastor Justin ministers, as we continue to flow in this service, Lord, that your glory will be revealed to them. There is no distance in the spirit realm, Lord. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we ask you to open up our eyes, open up the eyes of our understanding. We may be enlightened so we would know what is the hope of your calling, what the riches of the glory of our inheritance as saints is, what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe. Open up our eyes, open up our hearts. And teach us to walk on a plain path, a clear path of glory, of flourishing and thriving, abounding in your glory. I want to read some scriptures to you. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says this, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3.21 says, To him be glory in the church. Say, that's me. me. By Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Colossians 1.27 says, To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among us, the Gentiles, who are not Gentiles anymore. We have a covenant with God which are in Christ Jesus. It's in Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. Say this, Christ Christ in me, me. the hope hope. of glory. glory. 1 Thessalonians 2.12 says that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And Jesus, who being the brightness of his glory, according to Hebrews 1.3, and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, and he seated us with him in heavenly places through eternity. Christ in you, Christ in me, the hope of glory. As we continue to press in to what God has for us this morning, I'm telling you, your redemption is drawing nigh. He is right in front. He is right in this place. And his name is Jesus. He is the hope of glory that desires, if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, to live on the inside of you, but also to reveal himself to you as a child of the Most High God and all that he has intended for you. There is no circumstance that you're going through watching by way of internet, coming here for the first time or maybe a few times or been coming here for a long time. Let me tell you something. You haven't seen all that God has for you. There's so much more. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Get excited. Get your expectation high. And expect to see the glory of the Lord in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't disengage. Don't disengage. We're going to transition and I'm going to minister just a little bit 
on the tithes and offerings. And we're going to receive the tithes and offerings. And Pastor Justin's going to come up here and minister to us. I'm telling you, we're not done yet. We've already, Pastor Justin and I, have, we know there's some things that you may be going through. The Lord wants to touch you physically just as well as he has spiritually in this place. So we're not, we're not going anywhere. We're transitioning in, into another area here that you need is just as much as I need. And that's the area of increase. Part of the glory on your life is supposed to be increase. And you got to have that in your life in order for you to accomplish all that God has called you to do. So let's receive this. If you want to go back to your seats, you can. If you want to sit down, that'll be fine too. You don't have to. I'll never make you sit down. When the glory of the Lord shows up, you need to continue to honor and reverence Him. Amen? I'm going to read some more scriptures. And, you know, you flow. You do what God tells you to do. Tithes and offerings are based around the glory this morning. Amen? So we're going to continue that. I'm going to just read a few scriptures and then wrap this up. Listen to this. Isaiah 45 says this. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, the natural, Dr. Savelle ministered a, a little over a month ago, and he was talking about, you know what, you're not... Supernaturally, there's times when the light of God's glory may rest upon you like it did for him walking through a mall one time. But in real reality, the natural world isn't looking through spiritual eyes. So what they're looking to is what is it, what is on your life that they want to be, what they want to have? What glory is God getting in your life that somebody else wants to take a portion of? And I endeavor to tell you this morning that part of that glory is the glory of financial blessing on your life. When they see you prospering, when they see you excelling, even in your job place, your workplace, no matter where you go, no matter what, whatever you put your hand to seems to turn to gold. Amen? What is that? That's because the glory of God is on your life. They need to see it naturally just as much as they do spiritually. Amen? It's part of it. So they're going to see this. Isaiah 60, 1 through 3 says this. Arise, that's talking to me, you come up. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Now think about our earth right now. Darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. People are doing things that they're making up things to do. Come on. The people, but the Lord shall rise upon, say me. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. See, you got to see this. Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of glory. His desire is to, to manifest his goodness in mine in your life so that other people will be drawn to the glory that's on your life. Amen? He wants you to be blessed, to understand, to know that you're called to be the blessing. And he needs that blessing on you in order for you to distribute to somebody else. Amen? And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rise. Kings will be paying attention to what's going on in your life. Isn't that awesome? Habakkuk 2, 14 says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Oh, come on. As the waters cover the sea, you're gonna, people are going to recognize where everybody else is having turmoil, where everybody else is cutting back, that you just keep increasing. Come on. They're going to see that on you. Colossians 1.27, I've said this a few times, but I'm going to read it one more time. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among us, which is Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ephesians 5.27 says that he might present himself, present it, now he's talking about me and you, he's talking about me and you. He might present us to himself a glorious church. A glorious, say glorious. Glorious. You're glorious. Come on, you're glorious. I don't know how you feel this morning, but God calls you glorious, amen? Amen. Glorious, amen? You're the glorious church. And you know what? That church is without spot or blemish. Not having spot or wrinkle. Woo! Plastic surgery can't take you that far, amen? amen? Come on. Or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it shall be holy and without blemish. No blemishes. Say no blemishes. Now, it's important to realize that's even in your finances. No blemishes in your finances. Come on. you got to see that. You're the glorious church without spot or blemish. He's going he's to eradicate, wash away any past debt. He'll take it away. You turn your finances over to Jesus, and Jesus will turn your finances over. Amen. 
come on, but you've got, you and I've got to stay engaged with that and expect that. Meditate on it. You see this morning, I've already read to you probably a, a dozen different scriptures on the glory of God. What are you doing with the word of the Lord? Because God wants you to flourish and abound in 2018. Amen? His days, are, his days for us are glorious days. We need to put it on. And part of that is the finances. Amen? Hey Amen. Are you excited about giving this morning? Yeah. If you're watching by way of internet, as well as all of y'all in here, there'll be some prompts on the screen. If you want a text to give, you can do so. Uh, you can write a check, write it out to HFCC. We take great delight in getting an agreement with you for you to have glorious days where your finances are concerned. Amen. Yeah. Pray this with me. Say, Father God, Father God. Thank, you thank you for having the opportunity, having the opportunity to sow back into you. Back into you. I, give I give cheerfully and bountifully. And I reap cheerfully and bountifully. Thank you, God, for being so good to me. I receive your glory on my finances today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are going to receive the tithes and the offerings. Uh, don't forget, parents, tonight after uh, G29, about 745, we're going to have a, um, a meeting uh, about Camp C for C, Champions for Christ, which we'll be going to at the end of, the, uh, of June. Uh, is it right? No, July. We'll be going at the end of July. Also, Chip Brim will actually be coming here to be a part of our church later on in the fall. Uh, he's the one that oversees Christ, uh, Champions for Christ. And then Connect Class, February the 11th. If you've been waiting, thank you for being so patient with us. We are revamping as a team. We have revamped uh, the way we'll do our Connect Classes. It's only going to be a one day, which is a new membership class. But February 11th, if you've been waiting to become a part of this family, you know this is where God has called you to be. It's a one day thing. It's not something that you have to do over multiple weeks. We simplified it and we put it in a way that Pastor Justin and Annette and the rest of the team can minister to you in one day. We'll have dinner with you that night as well. So mark your calendars. If you're not a member of the church and want to be a member, uh, let's do that on February the 11th, okay? Uh, that'll be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Watch these videos and Pastor Justin will come up. Hey, 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 check out what's going on at HFCC today. Sounds like a Raisin Cane's drive through greeting, I know, but it rhymed. Where was I? Oh, announcements, here we go. Wednesday nights at Heritage of Faith are few for the week or week. It's a play on words, get it? See, if you're feeling weak during the week, Wednesday night service is perfect faith fuel. No matter if your faith seems weak or strong, you'll leave even stronger than you came. Ready to overcome. See you Wednesday. What's up, everybody? G29 stands for Generation 29, as in the 29th chapter of the Book of Acts. Wait, there's only 28. Nope. Our generation, this generation, is writing the 29th chapter every single day. Awesome, right? And besides all this, our youth group is flat out amazing. There's just no other way to put it. So, if you're in grades 6 through 12 and want to hang with the in crowd, join us Sunday and Wednesday nights as we dive in God's Word and get in God's presence. Hasta la vista! It's game night. It's cold outside, but the competition is heating up. We're playing cards, board games, and just hanging out. If you're between the ages of 18 and 30-something, this is the place to be. Stay tuned to social media for more details. Acquaintance plus fellowship equals relationship. We can get acquainted at a church service, but fellowship is the follow-up that leads to friendships. Friends we can run alongside as we chase Jesus. Thrive groups meet every third Sunday of the month from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Find your Thrive groups after the service in the lobby. Talk to a Thrive group leader today. If you're new with us today, we want you to feel right at home here at Heritage. This is a safe place for you and your family. We're so glad that you chose to be with us and we would love to stay connected with you. See this card? You can find one in the seat back in front of you. Simply fill it out, tear off the bottom, and turn it into our first time visitors lounge. You'll receive a special welcome gift as you go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Woo, man. Man, just the presence of the Lord is so sweet in this place. Amen. Man, so good to see you this morning. And, and I just believe we're just going to continue in just the flow of where everything is. It's interesting. We don't talk a whole lot about before service and song, song lists to different things that are said. It's all connecting together. And I, I believe something is going to continue to happen in our hearts this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. And, 
And I really enjoyed the last two weeks, uh, my wife and I tag teaming and, and everything, looking forward to doing more of that this year. And, and um, I just, I really appreciate Annette. I just appreciate the gift and her heart for the church. Give my wife a hand for, and uh, if you weren't here, if you weren't here Wednesday night, go online and listen to her minister as, as she continued on this series we're, we've been doing called Hearing God. And man, it was an awesome message this past Wednesday, Wednesday evening as well. So I encourage you to go on and listen to that. And, uh, and so we started something a couple weeks ago in this series called Making Room. And there's a, a phrase that she used, and we really, when we were in Africa back in November and December, we were just, just started talking about this, and, and, and we just kept having this statement come up in our hearts, making room for harvest. Making room for harvest. And, and immediately, a lot of times, especially in our circles, when we think of harvest, immediately we, we, think, of, we think of finances, Right. But harvest is really about, about God producing in any area of your life. You see, God wants to, you, wants to produce things in every area of your life. He wants, he wants to produce a strong marriage, a strong family, a, a, a strong, healthy, physical body. He wants to produce in you his, his dream in your life. Making room for harvest. And as we've been talking about, it's, 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 it's making room in here first. Yeah. See, the, the chain starts here. Say making room for harvest. Room for harvest. Amen. These, these are days of glory, days of flourishing, and days of abounding. God wants you to experience harvest in every area of your life. You know what? I'm not satisfied with the way I am as a husband. I want to grow as a husband. I, I want to grow as a father. I, I want to grow as a pastor, as, as a minister. I, how about you? You want to grow in your life? Yes. And so I know if, I, if I'm going to grow in my life, it's going to, it's going to start on, on me being changed in here. Yes. You know, the word says, it talks about we are transformed, right? Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, so I'm either going to be conformed to the world or I'm going to be transformed by the word. Yeah. So, so the thing is, is I constantly, every time I go to the Word, I wanted to constantly be making room in my heart for God's dream in my life. God's desire in each one of our lives. And here in Mark chapter 9, hallelujah, Mark chapter 9, thank you, Lord, verse 22 and this is a man that has a demon-possessed boy, and he, come to, he went to the disciples, and the disciples couldn't cast it out. And he, 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 then he comes to Jesus, and Jesus says, and, and it has often thrown him into the fire and into the water, intending to kill him. But if you can do anything, do have pity on us. The King James, the King James says, have compassion on us and help us. Amen. <laughs> and Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So Jesus having compassion, he asked, can you have compassion on us and help us? And Jesus said, if, I, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible. To him that believes. You see, for me, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a statement we can shout about. It's a, it's a statement we can praise about. But really, do you believe it? Yeah. You have to really ask yourself that question because, because really, if you can believe, all things are possible. You see, the, the, the man goes on in, in verse 24, it says, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Help my unbelief. So he's saying, I, I believe what you're saying, but wait a minute, I'm not sure if I really understand what you're saying. And so here, I, I hear this this morning as we, we convey this thought this morning, this whole aspect of, 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 of the heart. The, this whole aspect of the heart. I've, I've got to make room for harvest, so, so I, need, I, I need to change some things in my heart. Help, help, help how I think in my heart. 
Help how I think in my life. Help how I do things in my marriage. Help how I do things with my finances. Help, how, help my unbelief. Help me where I'm not thinking right. See, unbelief is just not thinking according to the way God thinks. And so help my unbelief. See, you're always going to be limited by your thought life. You're either going to be unlimited or you're going to be limited based on how you think about things. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 54. And I just want to revisit this for a moment. Because when you see something in the Word or you hear something preached... It's either one or two things are going to happen. Either you're going to say, I believe that, or I'm not sure. Yeah, true. And so you're just like that man. Help my unbelief. I believe, but wait a minute. There's some other things because of my experience, because of my lack of education, or my lack of understanding. I'm not really sure. And, and, and here last week we talked about this, this talking about the barren woman. And here, here the prophet says, sing, in verse 1 says, Sing, O barren one, you who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who did not travail with child. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. Now we know this is talking, he's talking about God's people, not a specific woman. But think about that. Here, the Spirit of God is speaking to this woman. He tells this woman who is barren, I want you to sing. I want you to shout aloud because, because right now you're barren, but you know what? There's going to come a time where you're going to be more than her. So, so what I'm saying is you can hear the fact that it's days of glory, flourishing and abounding, or God wants to set you free. God wants to heal your marriage or God wants to restore your life. You can hear those things and, 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 and immediately, you know, say, I agree with that. But once you get in your heart, it's like, I don't know. I, I, I don't really know. After all, what about that? Per- After all, what about that person? After all, what about that person? And so the thing is, you have to say, help. I need to make room for harvest. So I need to make room. Harvest, increase in my life, abounding in my life. I need to make room in here. And so here, God is speaking to this woman because he's wanting harvest in this woman's life. But he's got to speak something to her so she can start seeing things differently. And that's what the word of God does. It's to speak into your heart to change how you change your belief system. That's one thing we have in the world today is a lot of times people want to match their belief system and whether I'm going to agree with the word or not. No, you need to take the word of God and allow it to change your belief system. And so here, here the word is coming forth into this woman's life. And then he tells her, enlarge the place of your tent. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your habitation, spare not, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you will break, for you will break forth of the right hand and on the left. Here, this woman is barren and all of a sudden God has the audacity to say, I want you to enlarge. Yeah. I want you to enlarge. See, see, when you don't have anything and you haven't had anything for, for a long time, it's hard for you to think different. Yeah. No, I'll always be this way. I'll never get over this. I'm not going to get beyond this. I'm not going to get over this grief. I'm not going to get over this addiction. I'm not going to get over this. I'm always going to be this way. But God's saying to you this morning, enlarge. Come on. Come on. Because you know what? He sees something greater than what you see. He sees you on the other side of restoration. He sees your future. He sees what you don't have in your hand right now. He sees your ministry, even though, you, even though you might have a small ministry right now. He, he sees something beyond what you see. Yes. Amen. But he said, enlarge the place of your tent. That's enlarging your thinking. Good. And what does he do immediately? Because, see, that's the moment the thought is, how is that going to happen? See, you know, it goes, let me go back to that a moment. Just this whole aspect of small thinking. You know, you know, you know we, we are... Being in this world, we're created, for the most part, to think, not by God, but because of our environment, to be small. To think small. Because of our experiences. Because of our viewpoints. But think about throughout history. You know, he speaks to the barren woman. You're going to be more than the one. How can this be? 
God sees something different. What about Gideon? Gideon said, I'm the least, but God sees something different. What about Abraham? I'm never going to have a seed, but God sees the father of many nations. You had a whole city that said, "By you know, we're going to all die of starvation, but God speaks to a prophet and he stands up and said, well, by this time tomorrow, God sees something different. You have the disciples and, 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 and those following Jesus, and, and they see the multitude that's starving and hungry, but yet God sees two fish and five loaves that's going to be enough to feed the multitudes. So we have to see is, is God sees ultimate harvest, but we get caught where we are. You know, if, if I just looked at and was led by my life based on my natural limitations, I would not be where I am today. You know, there's a time in my life where I was sick physically and I was hopeless, but God saw this. God saw this. There was, there was a time when he said, he said, I want you to move to Texas, but, but in my heart, I was, like, I was like, I can't move to Texas. I've got all this debt. I'm the, no, one, no one has left my town where I live. No, no, one's been, no one's been in ministry in my family. And, and all these, see, those were my limitations, See, your thought and your heart are going to be your limitations of what God wants to do in and through your life in this year and beyond. So so don't let your limitations, that their natural limitations, hinder you. Enlarge your thinking. Because immediately when God speaks something to you, or even while you're here, or you're at home and something comes up and something arises, what happens is immediately something happens in our heart. Just like that man that took, that took his son to Jesus and he said, help my unbelief. Okay, help my, where am I at, Lord? I, I have a limitation here, so help me out here. What's going on? Because you see things that I don't see. And this woman, the first thing he tells her, in, I think it's in verse 4, he says, fear not. And he says, and don't be ashamed. I know I dealt with some of this last week, but, but I'm telling you, those are the biggest limitations that are going to hit. You have to make room for harvest. You need to get rid of the fear and get rid of the shame. But So what was the answer to it? And then we'll go forward. The answer we see in verse 5 and in verse 10. The answer is, for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. You see, who, who's, how's it going to happen? How's it going to happen? It's the Lord of hosts. Amen. How, how, how am I going to see harvest? It's the Lord of hosts. How am I going to get over this loss? It's the, it's the Lord of hosts. How am I going to get restored? Because this is a terrible situation. The Lord of hosts. See, see, your limitations are destroyed when you stop focusing on the limitation and you start focusing on him. You have to change your focus. To make room for harvest, you have to put your focus in the right place. And then in verse 10, for the mountain shall depart and the hill shall be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, says the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. So how is this woman that has no one, nothing going to be more Why? Because of the Lord of hosts and because of this. My kindness shall not depart from you. There's something in connection that we need to get a hold of more and more in our hearts is who God is and his mercy that he has on us. His kindness towards us. How are you going to get there? Because of who he is and his love for you. And his mercy for you. Let's go to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus 33. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, we, we say that statement so often, show, show me your glory. We, we sang it over and over, show me the glory. But what, what is it? What is it? Hallelujah. Starting in verse 12 of Exodus 33, 
Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. See, here, I I hear a, a, a desperation in Moses. Okay, wait a minute. I know you told me to do this. And, and, you know, I left Jethro's. I went there. We're out here in the middle of the wilderness. Now what? I know we're going to the promised land, but now what? See, there, there, see I, hear, I hear any questions that we have, it's, it's really something that's within our heart. So I hear, we're hearing Moses' heart here. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm out here, and I'm not sure how I'm getting there. Have, have you ever been there? <laughs> you, okay, God, I know I'm doing what you told me to do, but wait a minute, how am I going to get there? You know, I, you know, as a minister, even though I've been doing this for, for, for a number of years now, anytime I come out to preach to people, Lord, okay, are you out there with me? Because I do not want to do this by myself because Justin and himself, you don't want to see. So, so here, here Moses is saying, you have not let me know whom you will send, me, send with me, yet you say, I know you by name, and I've had favor in your sight. See, I'm going back to what God said. Okay, now I know this, but wait a minute, I'm still feeling this. Now, therefore, verse 13, now, therefore, I pray you, if I have found favor in your, shot, in your sight, show me your way that I may know you. Let that be your heart cry. See, you know, sometimes we get the cart before the horse where God, God, show me the way. But here, I love what he says, show me now your way that I may know you. See, I think if we kind of put things in right perspective, wherever you're at right now and whatever you're going through right now, get to know him and let, then let him show you the path. Become more deeply and intimately acquainted with you, perceiving and recognizing, understanding more strongly and clearly, and that I may find favor in your sight. And Lord, do consider that this nation is your people. He kind of throws that in there. Now, remind, reminder, God, remember, remember, we're your people, okay? All right, don't forget about me out here, God. All right, remember, we're your people. See, you can have questions in your heart, all right? Verse 14, and the Lord said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Man, man, my presence shall go with you. I think we can just go home right there. My presence shall go with you. And I will give you rest. See, it goes back to whenever you're having those questions in your heart, do you realize, we said the widow, your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts, he's your redeemer. He's the one that purchased you. He says, you know what? My presence is going to go with you. Hallelujah. And I'll give you rest. Verse 15, and Moses said to the Lord, if your presence does not go with me, do not carry us up from here. Hallelujah. And this is a rabbit trail there. How often are we doing things apart from him? Hallelujah. Verse 16, for by what shall it be known that I and your people have found favor in your sight? Is it not in your going with us so that we're distinguished? I and your people from all the other people upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have asked for. You have found, for, you have found favor, love and kindness and Thank you, Lord. We good? Hallelujah. I know you personally by name. And then Moses makes this statement. He says, show me your glory. Yeah. Show me your glory. What, what is the glory? I love, I love God's response to him. He says, he says, I will make all my goodness. Pass before you. And I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious. And I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. You, you know, I, I believe I forgot a, a, a statement there. He said, he said this, he says, he says, and God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. Now get this, and I will proclaim my name. Yeah. Right. The Lord before you. 
For I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy and loving kindness. You see, there's a connection. I wanted you to see this morning, there's a connection of God's glory and understanding who God is and his mercy. Now let's go to Exodus 34. Now just stay with me. God's doing something this morning. Thank you, Father. In Exodus 34, verse 6. Remember, Moses said, show me your glory. And God says, when I pass by, right? All my, you're going to see my goodness, right? Now, verse 6 here, it says he passed by. So now it went from a prayer to something that actually happened. It says, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth, keeping mercy and loving kindness for thousands, forgiving iniquities and transgressions and sins. Now get that. And he said, and he passed by and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord. Now, it's interesting, this word, the Lord here. Now, if you understand anything about interpretation of Scripture, there's three different ways the word Lord is written in Scripture. One, you have capital L with a capital O, R, and a D. They're all the same. Anytime you see that in Scripture, that means Elohim. It means the Creator. Anytime you see Lord with a O-R-D, they're capital letters, but they're a little smaller than the L. That means they're talking about Jehovah. And if you see a capital L with a lowercase O-R-D, it's talking about Adonai, like master or father. And so here, when he proclaims this, he, he says, the Lord, the Lord, he was saying, he was proclaiming himself to be Jehovah. He was, you see, he, who is Jehovah? Jehovah is the ever-living, ever-loving, self-existent one who constantly reveals himself to humanity. That's who Jehovah is. So, so when he shows up and he said he proclaims his name, he was saying, I'm Jehovah. I'm going to constantly reveal myself to you. I am Jehovah. I'm the self-existent ones. I am Jehovah. I'm ever living. I'm ever loving God. And I want to touch humanity. So when he says, show me your glory and God speaks his name, he's saying, wow, his glory is so much more than I understand. His glory is so much beyond my thinking and my capacity to understand. And, and he says this, and he says, talks about this mercy. The glory of God is, is who God is, but the glory of God is also his, his mercy. Now, what is mercy? Mercy, kindness, loving kindness, however you want to call it. It is, see, you, mercy is not something you, you describe. If you look at the mercy in the Hebrew, it's actually can only be seen with an action. Wow. It's something that can only be revealed in a tangible way. You, you can't necessarily just speak about mercy. You can only show mercy. It's a tangible thing. It's, it's something that I could try to explain it, but it's not really done until something happens. And so, so here we see the glory of God is not just for us to, it's for us to know him, it's for us to know his love, but it's also to see a manifestation of it. Anytime you see the glory of God happening in scripture, it always changes something or someone. The glory of God making room. Making room for who he is. Making room for his mercy. Wherever you're at in your life right now, whatever you're facing in your life right now, understand that he is Jehovah. Understand he wants to reveal himself to you. Make room for him to reveal himself to you. Make room for him to expand your understanding and your thing. Take the limits off of your understanding of who he is. And then allow him to reveal his kindness to you, his love for you, his mercy to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. In verse 9 of Exodus 34, it says, And he said, If now I have found favor and loving kindness in your sight, O Lord, let the Lord, I pray you, go in the midst of us. Although it's a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. And the Lord said, Behold, now get this, I lay down afresh, read really the Amplified, afresh the terms of the mutual agreement between Israel and me 
a covenant before all your people, I will do marvels, wonders, and miracles such have not been done or wrought or created in all the earth or in any nation. Wow. You see, this glory, Jehovah, this mercy, the whole aspect here, he, he cuts a covenant with him and he says that I will do marvels among you. Such has not been wrought or created in all the earth or in any nation. All things are possible to him that believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Do I, do I really believe that you love me enough to do marvels in my life? You, you know, Annette and I were talking and yesterday, you know, with a couple of families in the church are walking through some challenging situations. So just continue to lift up the Dolores and her family and as their brother went, went to heaven and, and also the Monsivias family. But I, and I was thinking about restoration and I was thinking about walking through difficult things. And, and, I, and I looked to Annette and because and a lot of times we classify miracles as, as, as something, okay, well, you know, someone was healed or, or that was happened, something as it pertained to a healing or a financial miracle. And, and all those, and I don't, I'm not making light of those because we're going to be praying for those things. To, we're going to be praying and, and agreeing for, for manifestations at the end of service. But I, I, got, I got thinking, I was sitting in the car and I, I just was really just captivated and the Lord just showed my life. He goes, Justin, why, why do you look at miracles as being big things? And I, and I just thought, thought about that and I, and, and, and he, and he, he said this to me, and, I, and Annette and I, and I looked at her, and I told this to her. I said, I said, you know what? You and I have walked through some things that would have probably destroyed most people. I mean, you all don't even know all our, some of you do, been here for a number of years. But, but it, you know, there's things that we've gone through that, that some people never make it out from and are still stuck there 20 years later. And he, he said, he goes, he said, because you, you chose to lay hold of me through the process and not let the process destroy you. So when you go through difficult things and, and what happens is, 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 is that making room in your heart, it says, is this going to destroy me? But see, make way for his mercy. Because what you're going through doesn't change his name or who he is, and it doesn't change his mercy. Allow the mercy of God. Allow the presence of God. Allow the glory to God to quicken every aspect of your life. The Lord gave me a definition years ago, a few years back, about a miracle in, in this. He says, what, he said, do you know what a miracle is, Justin? I said, yeah, you're going to tell me? And he said, a miracle is when the divine intersects with the ordinary and removes every limitation. You see, Annette and I, when I went through a difficult time, first thing the Lord said, he says, keep your heart right and you'll be restored in less than a year. And so, you know what, I had to protect my heart. It's my heart. It's my heart. And, and, when, and when I was going through, and, and things didn't look right, or I wanted to quit, wanted to give up, you know, felt like that man in Mark chapter 9. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe, but help my unbelief. Okay? All right. Your presence is with me. All right. You're going to walk through this. Yeah. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I know Rick said this, but I want you to see it again. 
Because what is the glory of God? I really need to... really change that tom- terminology, but who is the glory of God? In 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, actually if we even look in chapter 3, at the end of Exodus 34, just stay with me here for a moment, in the end of Exodus 34 it said, when Moses came down from the mountain, his face had shone like the sun. And then we, we, we see in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 8 says, why should not the dispensation of the Spirit... This spiritual ministry, whose task is to cause men to obtain and be governed by the Holy Spirit, be attained with much greater and more splendid glory. Verse 11, for if that which was at passing and fade away came with splendor, how much more must that which remain and is permanent abide in glory and splendor? So it's referring to the difference between the law and the time of Jesus. And he's, he's talking about it should be greater. But in, in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So if I want to see who God is and I want to understand his character and his mercy, I have to look at Jesus. I have to look at Jesus. Paul said, the verse before that, it says, we preach Christ. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, when, you know, when I was walking through my circumstances and going through other circumstances in life, it's when I was able to look at Jesus. I was able to look at Jesus. Let's go to John chapter 17. Thank you, Father. John 17, verse 20. It says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So he's praying not just for them, but he's praying for us. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. The glory which you gave me, I've given them. That they may be one as we're one. I and them and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one. That the world may know that you sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. See, there's this connection between the glory of God and the love of God. Verse 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they what? Behold my glory. That they would see my glory, which thou hast given me. For you what? Love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known thee that you have sent me. Verse, Verse 26 in the Amplified. I have made your name known to them and revealed your character yourself, your very self, and I will continue to make you known that the love which you've bestowed upon me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Here we see this. I pray that they behold my glory. And he makes this connection between the glory of God and the love of God. And he says this, I've made your name known to them. So Jesus is saying, if you want to see God's glory then look at my life. If you want to see the glory of God, look at my life because everything I did was to reveal the Father. Everything he did. Everything he did. Everything that Jesus did was an act of revealing the Father and showing mercy. When he taught the word on the, on the, uh, the Beatitudes on the side of the mountain, what it was, he was releasing the glory of God and he was releasing the mercy of God. When he healed the blind man, he was, he was releasing the mercy of God and he was releasing the glory of God. Everything that Jesus did was to reveal and release the glory of God and the mercy of God. Make room in your heart and allow his the understanding of who he is to overwhelm your heart this year. Hallelujah. And live from the inside out, not from the outside in. Hallelujah. We're to be inside. We, we should live from the inside out, not outside in. Hallelujah. 
the glory of God. But it's looking in the face of Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. And you'll see God's glory. Hallelujah. So when we say show us his glory, we're saying open up our understanding of who God is. Open our understanding up of who Jesus is. Open our understanding up. Cause us to see your love in amazing ways. Hallelujah. Jesus revealed the glory of God. Go to John chapter 2. Hallelujah. John chapter 2. Verse 11. It says, this beginning of miracles. This is right after Jesus did his first miracle. He said, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. Amplified says this, the first of his signs, miracles, wonderful works, Jesus performed in Canaan of Galilee and manifested his glory. By it, he displayed his greatness and his power openly. And his disciples believed on him. Yeah. You see, I don't just believe he, Jesus was manifesting his glory. I believe he was manifesting the Father's glory. Right. His first miracles, and it said, and this was the continuing in how he manifested the glory of God. Yeah. Everything Jesus did was to manifest the glory of God. Who God is and his mercy. Whose God is his love and kindness. Hallelujah. Make room for him to get involved in your life. In every aspect of your life. Amen. The glory of God. It, don't look at the glory of God as a feeling. We, oh, we felt the glory of God today. Well, I'm, it's so good that we feel it, but what if you don't feel it? Does that change it? Does that change it? He constantly wants to reveal himself to you. I might be getting ahead of, ahead of myself here, but, but why is it so important? And why does he so want to, and Darren, why does he so want to reveal himself to you? Because if you don't know who he is or the way he works, how will you tell someone else? Stop trying, stop trying to get to know God for what you can get from him. Get to know him. Get to know him. And I'm telling you, you'll see amazing things in your life. I've never pursued to preach in one place. Why? My heart was, just, I just want to know God. I didn't, I didn't even want to do this. I don't like talking in front of people. You have to get to know him and let him reveal himself to you. Because it's when you are captured by the glory of God, meaning who he is and his amazing mercy, it totally changes how you do life. Go to Ephesians 3 and I'll close with this. Verse 14, for this cause, Ephesians 3, verse 14, for this cause, I bow my knee into the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Man, here, here the Apostle Paul, he establishing, I mean, wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He, he here, he, I, my, I pray for you. I mean, this, this, is, this is not something he did flippantly. This was, this was something that, you see, when I pray for you, it's because I want you to know what I know. I want you to experience what I've experienced. When I preach to you, I, I, want, I want you to know the God that I know. I, I, and, and so here, everything Paul did, it was about relaying what had changed his life. 
Everything he wrote, everything he spoke was unfolding his heart. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Everything about his life. His tribulations, his pressures, his, 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 his faults, his everything. He lays it out for us. And, and here, this aspect, he, you know, I just really want you to get the heart. This isn't just some flippant prayer that he's praying. He's praying something because he understands if the church of Ephesus can get a hold of this, it would change them. It would change their whole perspective about life. And sometimes in order to make room for a harvest, we have to do something in our hearts to totally go back to the word of God fresh and new and allow it to change how we see things. And not just confess scriptures because it sounds good. In Ephesians 3 here, it's in verse 16, it says, this is his prayer, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. See, Paul wants us to, he grants you the riches of his glory that he could give you. Rick, he said, Paul said, I pray that he would grant you, give, bestow upon you the riches of his glory. He, Paul's saying, you know what? I've understood this and I want you to be awakened and I want you to receive in you the riches of his glory. Say, say this with me. God wants me. To know, to know the riches, the riches of, his of his glory. The word riches is the wealth, the abundance of his glory. Hallelujah. See, but if we just read scriptures fast, we, we'll kind of go right over it. But, but Paul's saying, this is, this is an exchange. Take Paul's saying, in this prayer, there's an exchange happening. And I, 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 I like... I like <laughs> I like the riches of his glory. See, wherever you're at, do you think the riches of his glory could change it? Whatever you're going through, do you think the riches of the glory of God could change wherever you're at? Do you, do you think it has the ability to do that? Amen. Are you with me? According to the riches of his glory. Now, there's several things here that he tells us that I believe that are an outflow of this glory. The first thing here is to be strengthened with might by his spirit. So this glory is going to cause you to be strengthened. Another thing is that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. You see, when you understand the riches, you're going to be strengthened. When you understand the riches, Christ is going to dwell in your heart by faith. And you're going to be rooted and grounded in love. And when you know the riches of his glory, you're going to be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the heights of it. And to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, now this is the riches of his glory. So the riches of his glory goes back to what? Knowing who he is and knowing love. The riches of his glory is about being for lack of a better, possessed with the love of God. This whole prayer is this, this riches of his glory that you, that you would know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, but that you would be filled with all the fullness of God. Make room for harvest. Make room for harvest. Making room for harvest out here begins in making room for harvest in here. Enlarging your tent that you be rooted and grounded in love. That you would comprehend all the saints what is the length, the depths, and the heights of that love and to know the love of Christ that passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. So now it's that we would be filled with Possessed with what Moses asked to see. What Moses asked to see, God's given it to us. I know that's a deep thought, but let it enlarge your tent. Let it enlarge your thinking. Let it enlarge every aspect of your life. Because it says after that, it says, 
now unto him that is able to do. You see, when you understand that, now unto him that is able to do, now unto him that is able to do, I don't believe we're waiting on God. You know, a lot of people ask, well, where's the next move of God coming? Is it going to be that? Is it going to be? No, God's just wanting you to get in line with his word. Get in line with his word. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask, think, according to the power that's working in, in, in us. Unto him be glory in the church. Man, glory in the church. Glory in the church. Months back, I did a few messages on the church alive. Why should the church be alive? Because according to Revelation, it says he walks through the churches. Our church should be alive. Our life should be alive because glory is on his church. It's because of who he is resonates to the rest of the world. And the love of God resonates to the rest of the world. Everyone stand to your feet. And I want to read Ephesians 3. And I want to read this to you in the Passion Translation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ephesians 3. Just close your eyes and listen to this. So I kneel humbly in all before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on the earth. And I pray that He would unveil within you the unlimited riches of His glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with His divine might and explosive power. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and the root of your life. Then you'll be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions, how deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love, how enduring, enduring and inclusive it is, endless love beyond measurement, that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you're filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church and every generation through Jesus Christ. And all that we will yet in, in all that we will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you for showing us your glory in the face of Jesus. In the face of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To know you. To know your love. To be grounded and founded and rooted in it. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Mm. To make room in our hearts, sometimes there needs to be healing in our hearts. Remember I talked about it. A lot of times we look at miracles. It's in something that's outwardly seen per se as a healing or financial. But what about a miracle of him healing your heart? Yes. You know, what? because offense has destroyed people. 
anger has destroyed people and anger has caused people to destroy other people. Why, why can't a miracle be getting free from anger? Why A miracle being you're able to finally look in the mirror and forgive yourself. Don't, don't say that's just something easy. And it's not easy. Because sometimes we can put on a show for everyone else, but still look in the mirror and still know everything about us that we hate. A miracle. What about, you know, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is, is a cancer. Bitterness is a cancer. How, how, do you, how about mercy and the glory of God touching the cancer of unforgiveness? Because ultimately, really, if we would really be truthful, a lot of our, our natural things that we deal with, the root causes are all those other things. If you re, it, it's, not, it's not necessarily you need a financial miracle. You, 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 need, you need a better work ethic. You think God can touch your heart to where it changes how you treat your job, how you do things? See, we, 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 may, like to, we may, may like to make it all the spiritual side of things, but realizing the spiritual aspect is to f- affect my natural. You maybe maybe with, even with with sickness and things like that, and this is not to make anyone condemn. Maybe maybe the Lord's been telling you to change your eating habits for ten years, but you haven't. I know that can be hard, but we're wanting miracles. And hey, you know, I, I, I praise God. God. God will step in and you'll, you'll see a healing. But, but the thing is, is, you know, it's like God healing someone of emphysema, but not stop smoking. Well, I'm healed. Praise the Lord. I'm healed. Well, yeah, you, you might have been healed. But the thing is, what's going to keep it from coming back? Well, just with relationships. I go from one relationship to relationship. Well, maybe it's not the other person. Maybe you need to work on you. But see, how, our, how it affects our relationships, how we do everything, will go through the filter of, of unforgiveness, offense, bitterness, resentment, uh, looking down on other people, thinking you're better than other people. All these things, what happens is, is, is it affects all those other areas. Yeah. That's good, Hallelujah. That's good. Hallelujah. Healing. Healing in our physical bodies. So I just want you to see that. Lots of we look at miracles, we, like the first thing, and, and, and yeah, we need to, I'm believing for miracles to happen every Sunday. We confess it every Sunday, every, every Tuesday in our staff meeting, we have, we have like 20 confessions that we declare over you and over this church, over your finances, over every aspect. The, the, the grace of God was on this church and we're flourishing. Every service we experience signs and wonders and miracles. Every service people being filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, delivered, and set free. Our worship sets the atmosphere for the, for the presence of God to move and the word to go forth. I mean, we have things that we say over you. And the thing is, so we're believing for miracles. I'm believing even today that we're going to pray for people that are sick and you're going to get healed today. Amen. Amen. But as I was praying over the last several days, I kept hearing this. The Lord said, I want to heal, I want to hear, heal marriages. I want to heal finances. And I want to heal physical bodies. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Just close your eyes. Hallelujah. And just right now, just if you can, just put, pull on, push away what you're going to do this afternoon. This afternoon. What? What the person is doing to your left and your right, or take your time, take your focus off what time it is. And go inward just for a moment. Out of our innermost being. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for touching every heart. Repeat this after me. Father God, God, I open my heart heart to you. you. I believe believe that all things are possible possible 
to him that believes. Help me in my unbelief. Help me in areas where I haven't been thinking right. Help me for holding on to wrong thoughts and ideas about myself, about others. In Jesus' name. Just, just right now, just let him minister to you. Let him minister to your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Just as people have their heads bowed, just if, if you say, Pastor Justin, I need my heart healed. Just lift your hand. Lift your hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. See those hands all over the place. You can lower your hands. Oh, thank you, Father. The courage. I declare over you the courage to let go. I declare and I command in the name of Jesus that you let go of anger right now in Jesus' name. You let go offense right now in Jesus' name. You let go of offense in Jesus' name. Whatever's heavy, on, whatever's in your heart, release it to him. You know what that is. Forgive those people. Forgive that person. Forgive that pastor. Forgive that church. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Healing hearts. Healing. Some of you might be just torment over the past. Let your past go. Let it go. Let it go. Make room for harvest. Make room for where God wants to take you. Make room for Jesus to work in you and do a work through you. courage to let it go, the courage to let it go, the courage, the courage, the courage to trust God with your life, the courage, yeah, there's, I just sent my, there's some here that you've been offended at God, the courage to let it go. The courage to release it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Father. We love you. 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 We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Healing. Healing. Healing every heart. Healing. 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 Healing your heart from your childhood. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing, healing your heart from your childhood. Yeah. Yeah, release that rejection right now. Release it, release it. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
healing, healing. Thank you. We'd see you. Oh, hallelujah. See Jesus. Hallelujah. That we'd see you, Jesus. That we'd see you. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Healing hearts. Healing hearts. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for healing in marriages this morning. Healing in marriages this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Annette, can you come up here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Rick, I want you to come up and stand with Cassie. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. No, you, you hold the microphone. Oh, you got a microphone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Healing hearts, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Everyone with your heads bowed. Husbands and wives, I as you have you take hands and said that this is just between you and the Lord. Let me say, just say, Pastor Justin, Nett, and Rick and Cassie, we need healing in our marriage. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, healing, healing, healing. Oh, thank you, Father. Rick, I want you to pray over marriage. I want you to pray over the marriages. Hallelujah. You can put your hands down if you have much to Healing. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Jesus, you are the perfect example of a husband to a wife. You love us so unconditionally, Lord. We draw on that anointing, Lord, the relationship that you have towards us. And I ask you, Lord, to wash clean the marriages and the men and the women that have tried to do this on their own, that have labored hard, that have been in, out, in and out situations, restore. We declare healing over them first. Healing, supernatural, or forgiveness, Supernatural. Shohata ah. Ishingo bahata Supernatural restoration, Lord. Cleansing. A cleansing. A cleansing. A cleansing. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Wash, pure, and holy. We call on you, Jesus. Open our understandings. Open the understanding of men throughout this whole entire congregation. Men watching by way of internet. To have an understanding of who you are to us. 
so that we can love our wives the way our wives need to be loved. We draw on your anointing, Lord Jesus. You've placed that anointing on the inside of us. We look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. You who began a work in us will continue it until the day of your return. We need your insight, your ideas, and your concepts. We're loving our wives is concerned. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves. Pray this with me, men. We humble ourselves before you, Lord, to be the men, the husbands you created us to be. We ask you, Lord, to open the eyes of our understanding so we will know how to love our wives like you love us. Thank you, Jesus. Ishombo ata ta 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 ba. Shikingo ba. Will you pray with the women, Cassie? Cassie, pray with the women. Pray with the women. Cassie, go ahead. Hallelujah. Oh shaba shikiko ma. We bless you, Father. Ilombo shakanda. We thank you for the honor it is to be a wife. It's an honor to be a wife. It's an honor to come alongside our husbands, to stand next to them, to stand with them. Father, we thank you for open hearts, open spirits to see our husbands the way that you see them, to see beyond what we see in the natural, but to see our husbands the way that you see them and to come alongside of our husbands and to come alongside of you Jesus to be all that you've created us to be as women of God as help meets as lovers of Jesus to love our husbands and to trust your word. To trust your word when you say to submit. That you are not taking something away from us, but yet you are placing us in a position to be covered by your grace and your glory. And we choose to trust your word and we choose to stand by our <laughs> stand by our men and love them with the love of Jesus just as we are submitted and love you Jesus thank you lord healing father i lift up every person here that is walking through or have walked through divorce yes I thank you for healing in their hearts, yes, restoration, yes, peace over their lives. Yes, I lift up every single person to you in this place. I thank you for healing in their hearts, yes, healing from past relationships, yes, healing from yes. wrong things, wrong situations. Yes, thank you, Father, for wholeness in the hearts of all our single people in this place. Amen. Hearts that are whole, Hearts that are yielded to you. Hearts that are waiting your desires fulfilled in their lives as it pertains to a relationship. Thank you, Father. Healing hearts. Healing relationships. Healing families. Thank you for the healing The presence of God and the love of God to flow through every family here. Restoring and making new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
If you're here and you need healing in your physical body, make your way to the altar here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for letting us take time to do this. Thank you. Just, just stay hooked in with us. Hallelujah. If you're here from, uh, you're out of town, you're here for the Kenneth Copeland Ministers Convention and, and you're a pastor, uh, you and your wife, if you could come up here as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, just, just come alongside me here. Hallelujah. You just, are you for the, you're here with the conference? The minister's conference with KCM? Okay, I wasn't sure if you were pastors. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Joseph and Charlene, hallelujah. Come up here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Vic, can you come up here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kenny, Kenny, can you come up here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Linda Edwards, can you come up here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Is, is a, before we pray for him, is there something you want to say? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Just, everyone stretch your hands towards them. And as ministers, we're all going to lay, over, lay hands on different ones of you. But it, what I want to do, don't pray. We're, we're going to release our faith. You receive. As soon as we place hands, that's a point of contact. We're going to say, just in the name of Jesus. We're not healers. He's the healer. Hallelujah. And he told us in his word to lay hands on the sick and they would recover. Hallelujah. All you need to say is, I receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Ushers, you ready? Hallelujah. Healed in Jesus' name. Receive. Restoration now. Restoration now. Restore now.
Thank you, Father. Everyone with your heads bowed. If you're here this morning, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And you want to make room for him in your heart this morning. Don't let another day go by. Another moment go by. Without making him Lord of your life. If that's you, just slip your hand up right where you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. If you're watching by way of internet, the word says now is the time of salvation. If you're in this place, now is the time of salvation. Receive Jesus. Receive his sacrifice and receive what he's done for your life. Accept him into your heart fresh and new. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Father. Just everyone repeat this after me. Father God, I receive Jesus into my life. I turn from my ways and I go his ways. My old life, my old sins, everything I used to be, 
I give it to you. And I receive Jesus into my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. If you receive something today, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Do you have anybody? Rick, you good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everyone be seated for a moment. This is our uh, second Sunday of the month, and it's our building fund. So just you give us a moment. Just go ahead and watch this video. Things are on the horizon for Heritage of Faith. God is on the move and stirring up old visions that have been at rest for years. You could say the winds of change are blowing in our household of faith. God has spoken over us through Dr. Savelle about expanding and enlarging our territory. This is the time more than ever to reach as many people as we can for the kingdom of God. Jesus is coming back soon, and there is a lot to accomplish before he does. This layout was inspired by Mrs. Savelle years ago. The desire to reach out to the hurting ones in our community and love them for Jesus was and still is the inspiration for such a plan as this. Exciting things are soon to come, and we believe we will all play a vital role in the growth and expansion of God's vision of Heritage of Faith. Just as when David's heart burned with a passion to build a house for God in a time when his presence dwelt in a tent, so too the Lord has placed a passion within us to make this land reflect his glory and his goodness. And just as when the children of Israel brought forth their contributions to build the Lord's house, our heart's desire is to invite you to be a part of this journey with us to be a part of building something grand for God. Although we know that God does not dwell in houses made of brick and mire, but in the hearts of man, we do believe that this place should be a reflection of who God is. It should be a reflection of His goodness and glory and excellence. Our live stream has had over 230,000 views around the world. What God is doing right here in Fort Worth, Texas is broadcast to 84 different countries. The glory and presence that you sense every time we come together to worship God comes into people's homes, offices, vehicles, and even churches. We receive testimonies from pastors across the world that view our live stream services before they go and minister to their own congregations. Glory to God, you are a part of it. As we make preparations for this growth and expansion, there are updates that need to be made as we move forward with live stream and broadcast, and we would like you to be a part. We are looking to invest in lights, to update our tripods as we grow our broadcast team, as well as purchasing media tools to enhance our worship. Not only does Heritage of Faith reach others through live stream, but we also influence and encourage our community through various outreaches on a monthly basis. We have set our faith to believe for a team of 500 to go out on a weekly basis, reaching the homeless, the fatherless, the widows, those that are imprisoned, and really, whoever God places on our path to reach for His kingdom. With this in mind, we would like to purchase a 15-passenger van to help transport our church family to these outreaches. This van will be a huge tool to reach outside of our four walls with the love of Jesus and the message of faith. These two projects are only the beginning of a much grander plan that God has in store for us, a plan that will be unveiled in the months to come. But for now, we invite you to lock arms with us and to pray about how you can sow into these two areas of ministry. You are a vital part in fulfilling the vision that God has for us at Heritage of Faith. Amen. You know, and, and so just with, uh, we only brought this before you all just one other time, and we're already 20% there. 
uh, about 20% there in this project already. And, and like I said, it's, there's a lot more to come. These are just some basic things that we're needing to get off the ground, some other things that we need. Um, you know, we're, we're excited about where we're going as a church and, and the other things that we're going to unfold uh, later this year about where, where God's taking us as a church and, and with building-wise. And we're excited about the growth and excited about, what, like I said, what God's doing here. So if you want to sow towards that and just pray about, you just pray about just what God would have you do to be a part of this project. And so you can text to give. And just when you text to give for the, for the um, building, you just put your amount and you put building after it. Um, and so you're giving by way of internet. It's pretty much the same way. Um, but just, just see, Lord, if you don't, you're not prepared to give this morning, just pray, what would God have you do to be a part in us reaching this goal in a, in a, in a quick way? Amen. Amen. Everyone doing our part. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You ready to give? Yes. Oh, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for heritage of faith. I thank you for this church family, and I just thank you for your hand on everything that we're doing. I thank you for your wisdom and direction uh, and, and where you're taking us, not just this year, but in the years to come. And Lord, I thank you for these projects that we're, that we're undertaking with the, the media for, for our, our live streaming and, and, uh, and, and the van, Father, to help with our youth, help with outreaches and, and the things that you directed us to do. I just thank you for your hand on these things, and I just thank you for, for causing it to come to pass. I thank you that, that you give us favor on everything that we're purchasing, everything we have to buy, and everything. I thank you, Lord, for your hand on everything we're doing. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, you had and received the offering. And uh, while they're doing that, just want to reiterate uh, to you what Rick said about uh, Connect Class, which is our membership class, and that'll be on February 11th, uh, I believe, uh, is at 4 o'clock. And, uh, and like I said, Annette and I will share our hearts and we'll share some things about how the church operates, how we do things. And we also have a dinner provided for you that night as well. And, and we also pray over each one and, and, and receive you into our church family. And, and it kind of gives you an idea of where, what we're about, where we're going, and how do you get involved and, and where do you see yourself within this church vision. And so I want to encourage you, if you're not involved in the church anywhere, get involved, get plugged in. I, if, I can't say this enough. It's not about needing volunteers or anything like that. To me, my life was changed, not just because of the word and, and those things, but it was also, also through my service. Amen. You know, part of your discipleship is serving. Part of your discipleship is being connected to a church family. Right. Amen. So if you're not connected to a church family, I want to encourage you to make that decision. And so you can be able to register online for that as well as in the lobby. And uh, this coming Wednesday... Uh, we'll be continuing uh, on hearing God, and I'll be speaking this Wednesday night. So, so if you're able to come, I encourage you to be here, hear the word. If you can't make it here or get here in time, man, tune in online and, and hear the word because it would change your life. Amen. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Hallelujah. I call you blessed, prosperous, and highly favored. Love you all. See you Wednesday night. Later. Amen.